Welcome to Spiritual Rockstar Podcast, where world-changing spiritual entrepreneurs come to deeply awaken the power within to bring forth their greatest purpose, to create massive awakened impact for millions of souls around the planet, while enjoying being in tune with all life and real wealth in all aspects of their lives. I'm your host, Daniel John Hanneman. And welcome everybody. Here we are, Spiritual Rockstar Podcast Show again. Oh my goodness, we've got a beautiful, amazing being that she has got such a depth of uh, awesome love and beauty and and joy and depth and no nonsense and practical. Isn't that a pretty awesome blend? Yeah, she's going to have some really like bottom line answers for you while expanding you more into a deeper awareness of who you truly are, how you can simplify your path to move forward as a soul with whatever is wanting to happen in your life, whether it's your career, your business, what have you, she's going to help you to simplify it all for you, especially your left brainers are going to love this podcast today. So she's going to help talk to that while also deepening your deeper awareness at the same time. So Bernadette or B, as you like to be called, uh, I'm so grateful to have you here today. I'm really grateful for the invitation. It's beautiful to be here. Thank you. Awesome. So I'll tell you all about Bernadette briefly here before we dive right in. So again, Bernadette Logue is, or better known as B by uh, many people, um, it's how much she prefers, is a spiritual life coach and author with over a decade of experience working with clients online, both one-to-one and in groups, helping them to reconnect and align with their soul for more purposeful, fulfilling, and a magical life. Yes, this includes supporting people to navigate their journey through life from the spiritual vantage point, addressing both the soul aspect and practical realities of their humanity, minds, emotions, bodies, and all outer aspects, so-called outer aspects, right? Mm -hmm. Based uh, uh, on the soul adventure. It's all adventure. What is life showing us? What's the teaching us? Why did this happen? Why is this happening? We're a detectives. We're, we're taking a look at this uh, as part of the show. Relationships, love, money, careers. Let's look at it all. What's happening? What's your life trying to tell you? <laughs> Bern Bernadette or B, I got to get used to that. So um, yeah, let's dive in. Um, wow. You are like just talking to you briefly before we start the show you're you are you're a detective you're like hey, let's get down to the bottom of what's really going on here so um what brought you into uh being such a detective were you a huge skeptic mm -hmm. of any of this stuff when you first got started mm -hmm. and exploring all this stuff or you've always been sort of a spiritually oriented sort of leaning person or you know, deeply curious about it, or I'm curious. Uh, yeah, how you yeah. Started. yeah, great question. Thank you. Uh, no, I was not a spiritually leaning person at all. I was just your mainstream, brought up in a religious household, non-practicing as soon as I left home, just all about my career and what I want to do and what I want to get and how I'm going to be successful and doing my thing, which I did all the way through into my early 30s. I was always interested in personal growth. So I did landmark education when I was really young. I went to John Kehoe events. I did different mind power things and was really interested in reading about a lot of those things, but was not coming at that from a spiritual perspective really at all. Didn't have spiritual practices. Uh, and then in my early 30s, uh, the void inside started to roar at me. And there was a deep level of understanding that I've done all the things that I should do and nothing is feeling right. This doesn't feel right. I've done, I've got all the career staff in the house and I'm married and but why do I feel empty? And I cannot bear the thought of doing another 10 years and then just still feeling empty. So it was kind of like I'd gotten to a point where there was not, not really anything else to get that I thought was going to give me a sense of happiness. At that time, someone in my life, um, was sick and there was no cure and there was no answers for them and I was very angry about this <laughs> and I thought that can't be true that can't be right there must be something at the very same time synchronicity signs and providence started up on steroids and there was like repeated signs and synchronicities about healing and a friend of mine was nudging me to go to a spirit channel. And I was like, what is that about? What are you up about? What is going on? <laughs> but I was so kind of desperate for answers. I went and it popped the lid off Pandora's box for me. 
and it began what ended up being like this deep dive for over 10 years down the rabbit hole of everything spiritual to understand why do I feel this way? Why is this happening to people that I love? What should we be doing? What are we meant to be doing? How does this all piece together? Trained in energy healing and just went down this path, left my career. I made some really radical big leaps, which was ballsy and courageous and probably a little bit naive and just went all in to to like understand what is going on for us as human beings who are we and how do we work with all these different aspects of ourselves and life that I'm starting to learn about through not just the psychology but the spiritual dimension of life mm -hmm, mm -hmm. nice nice so you are not at all spiritually focused or inclined, really, it sounds like, uh, for the most part. So, but you probably are always deeply curious about whatever you're interested in. You seem like that person, right? Like, yeah. let's get, I'm kind of really wondering about this or that. I want to really learn more yes. about that. Like, you've probably always been that type of person, is my guess. <laughs> yes, I think you're right. And I think the thing is, is I was raised in a, in a, in a faith household. I'm, a, I'm from an Irish Catholic lineage so you mm -hmm. ain't getting away from that like mm -hmm. intense faith system and people had like a really strong faith so I think the faith thing was really in me but one of my sisters died when I was 13 and I was angry as all hell at God like angry as mm -hmm. as you would be when you're a teenager and you're experiencing grief and loss and you can't make sense of why would that happen mm -hmm. so I kind of shut down that part of my life and but the curiosity was always there from the self-interested egoic perspective of why do I feel this way? I shouldn't feel this way. I've got everything that I should, I should be happy. I must be a selfish person that I can't just be happy with what I've got. Is this, is doing that, is this it? Like, is this it? Is it, is this it everybody? Is this all, this is what we do. We just get up and we go to work and we do our thing and like, surely there's something else. And of course, there's something else, <laughs> right? <laughs> there's something really big else going on. And I think that's, that filled a really big void for me. It filled a massive void. The second I started to understand the spiritual dimension of life, that void dropped away. Mm. Wow. So, yeah, I mean, there's these big things that are happening, you know, sometimes earlier in our life, like you mentioned with um, your sister. It's like, wow, I mean, what... There must have been a lot of soul searching then, right? Like... But you back then you were relying on, uh, you know, I don't know where did you look for like where did you look for answers? Or you, did you yeah. how what how did you react back then? I'm curious because I feel like so many of these things like have such an impact for our listeners too. Like those big, yeah. you know, we lost somebody or something, right? Where, where it has such an effect profound effect on our life and then we why 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 how this isn't fair or what you know all those things we go through and everybody's gone through something they felt was unfair right and yeah let's talk about that so what did you believe about that what did you go through and then you know I'm curious about that yeah 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 that's a really good question I think at the time because I've come from a, a family lineage of faith there is a deep, uh, the approach with death in that faith-based upbringing is, it, is based on extreme gratitude for the life that has been given. So when someone, if you're Irish and someone in your family dies, you have a, you have a wake and celebration of their life, right? So while it's deep grieving, you're also celebrating their life. So there was a really clear thing in me when going through that at a young age, I was only 13, so I'm a child, right? You're a child, you don't have processing capabilities at that age. So all I'm aware of is this seems very unfair, makes no sense to me. I'm filled with grief, but we're very lucky mm -hmm. to have had this life, this person in our life. And I think that planted for me, I basically then buried everything as you do as a surly teenage girl, <laughs> you bury everything. But then as you get into your 20s, for example, it probably started to simmer through what came out as exploration of psychology and interest in personal growth and I do remember thinking this one thing she didn't make it past 25 so you better be grateful for your life and you better do something meaningful with it mm. and that that always really drove me because once you've got an acute awareness of your mortality 
you don't really dilly dally around very much. <laughs> you know, you get really clear on you are not going to be here on this planet for any certain number of days. And so you better be sure that you're doing something with it that feels meaningful to you. And I think that's what created the void that came up. I'm very clear now that her contract with me from a spiritual perspective was to bump me, was to bump me on my path. And so we all have these spiritual contracts with people that are important figures in our lives. And so even in our passing, uh, that can end up being a contribution to another person because the passing creates a completely different uh, shift in your awareness and in yourself and sometimes in the trajectory of your life in fact mm -hmm. yeah wow so yeah everybody has different you know different cultures have all these different ways of dealing with grief so it's interesting if we I don't know if this is your perspectives because we're talking about your soul journey and simplified and everything so um so you've got like this thing happened in your life that was probably I mean you just said it was very informative as to mm -hmm. how you proceeded with your life from that moment forward like it was maybe you didn't make a big deal of it in your mind at the time I don't know but like it was very informative to you mm -hmm. and so like there are you know do, do you believe in like when you're talking about the soul's journey do you believe in like what is that first of all and then we'll get into it from there but yeah I'm curious like you know I'm curious like you know like so are you into the idea of soul contracts and like, mm -hmm. did she come here, you know, obviously for you and for everybody, was it just her time to go? Like we'll get there yeah. about like, all well, how do all these things play into our soul's journey? Let's talk about what the soul's journey is and how the, all these different things we could get into yeah. play okay. into your soul's journey. Yeah. Okay. Beautiful. Yeah. Cause it's a, there's a, it's a lot, right? Cause, cause your soul's journey, sure. is everything, anything and everything that you could possibly imagine to talk about life is your soul journey. Cause the only reason you're experiencing it is because you're here in a body and you're here because you're a soul and you're here as a soul because you chose to come for a journey. <laughs> so that's the only reason. So, so people say, well, what, what spiritual everything, literally everything, because you are spirit having a human experience. So therefore anything and everything you experience is a spiritual experience. There's no getting away from it. There is always the spiritual dimension and aspect. And then there's the physical reality layered on top and it's all connected up. So from the perspective of like, what is the soul journey? Well, we're only here because we've chosen to come here and we didn't choose in our personality selves. So if we talk about having a soul, which is an expression of source, God, love, universe, oneness, I use all language because I really feel like everybody's faith is to be honored and cherished. So whatever your worldview is of what is the, the something, the higher power or the beyond this dimension, our souls are expressions of that. And I think Miriam Williamson, I think it was, uh, once said this on a lecture for A Course in Miracles. I'm pretty sure it was her, if I quote correctly, it was so many years ago. But she says, we are like rays of light from the sun, the sun being source, God, universe, divinity, and us being the ray of light. So we're never disconnected from it. We're part of it. It's the only reason we exist. The power that we have comes from it. But then we're incarnated. And the only reason we're here is because our souls have chosen to come here. And people often say to me, particularly when there's been trauma or a difficult life, I would not have chosen this. And it's like, no, you would not have, because that's your personality talking and we would never choose. We would never choose to have duality, full stop. We would choose just to have love and nothing else. And then we would have just stayed over there <laughs> in the oneness. But so we come forth into this life because we have an agenda, a plan. And so, and the thing is, when people are like, what's my purpose? What's my purpose? You're already living it. You, the, you are breathing and you are here. You are living your purpose because it has multi-layered, uh, multi-layers to your soul's plan and purpose. And you cannot be not living it because it's not your career. It's not a thing you do. It's everything that your soul came for. And that's a really beautifully multi-dimensional thing, which we can talk about. Um, and so there's no need to look out there. There's no need to try and seek and find it. And I think that's a big trap we fall into when we're trying to understand our spirit, our soul, our purpose, as we're looking out into the world. And that's natural, but there's answers a lot closer to home. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, some people, like I'm, you know, my website's Rock Your Sacred Purpose. So, you know, I, I talk about purpose and everything. And some people say your purpose is just to be and to, mm -hmm. to just to know the oneness with all life. And some people think that it's uh, that, and you know, 
we also, but what are you here to do? You're here to do specific, a specific thing and you're supposed to do it at the highest level and actualize yourself. And, and then, yeah, there's people like you, like your purpose, whatever the hell you decided is, uh, you know, I'm not saying you saying that actually, but uh, some people say that, um, and then some people say like, you're already living your purpose. Like you just said. So, um, so yeah, it's interesting all the ideas about purpose, right? Like, I think like everybody's right in a way, but like everybody just has another way of talking about it, yeah. you know? I mean, um, yeah, I mean, everything is part of that soul's journey that's informing like what, you know, your purpose is, I guess, right? I mean, isn't that sort of the way it is or? Yeah, well, I think, um, you know, when we, I'm really clear on one thing and that is that I don't have the truth for you or you or you or you, but I do know I can point toward truth. And then mm -hmm. you need to look and feel and intuit and you will see it when it resonates and what it is for you. And so I think it's really, really important to say that there is no one answer. And you're right, all of those things hold true. All of those different perspectives hold true. And then isn't it interesting that there's zillions of different types of teachers saying things in all different types of ways, because there are billions of people that are all needing to hear a certain language and a certain vibration and a certain tone and a certain way to meet them where they're at and who they are uniquely. So that said, in the work that I do, and we talk about the soul journey, I call it the soul odyssey. And that's from pre-birth until you've transitioned back to spirit side, that there are 11 stages that we go through on the journey and that we all go through them and there ain't no escaping them. And they're already happening, whether you realize they're happening or not. And you can be an atheist and this is happening. <laughs> it's not like it's not like it's a spiritual framework that you choose. And then when our souls come forth, there are four things that we all experience and you cannot escape them as a human being. And those four things are what I incorporate into our soul plan. And they're all purposeful. They all have purpose. And because you can't escape them and they're already happening, therefore you already are on purpose. But there is an, there is an opportunity to go from, I don't feel like I have purpose and this is all playing out to, oh, I see it. And now I'm going to, more align myself with it and then do things that align so those four things are learning healing growth and contribution and contribution is what most people think about as what's my purpose what's the thing I'm going to do with my life that will give me a sense of purpose and will make a contribution towards humanity but you can't be here and not learn in so many different ways learning informs healing and growth Healing and growth also inform learning. The whole thing is interconnected and synergistic. And typically what happens is what happens to you in your life journey, through the events of your life, your childhood, your relationships, your challenges, your breakthroughs, those things all support your learning, healing and growth. But what's really fascinating is they will often set you up for your contribution. Mm -hmm. And so later in life, you look at what you're doing and you're like, oh, wow, I couldn't have done this if I hadn't learned those things, if I hadn't gone through that experience, if I hadn't grown. If you look at anyone who's doing anything amazing and you say, how did you come to what you're doing? They will often recount their learning, healing, growth, their challenges, their breakthroughs, which is all this kind of formulation of us, like you said, self-actualizing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I could just go on and on. So I'll just, I'll just pause, <laughs> I'll pause and give you, give you a chance. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. Do you want to meditate and make money? Let it be simple. Let it be easy. Let it be fun. Go to yoursacredpurpose.com and get your free meditate, make money meditation today. Well, I love that, you know, you, you, you like to break things down, right? It's, it's four of these, there's 11 and then, yeah, you got these certain things you can, you can't escape and, I love that. I love that. Um, you know, you what are the inescapable truths? Yeah, I, I really like that. Like, what is it? Because, because that's one thing that you know, if we're ever going to find anything that's so-called truth, um, you know, it's it is looking at the things that are pretty much, you know, undeniable and unescapable, right? Those are the things mm -hmm. we can say. Pretty much, this is true. I mean, I guess you could look at it another way. Some people, somebody could argue with it. We're not learning anything. We're just remembering, right? Like, <laughs> like that would be true too, right? There's always another perspective. This is yeah. so fun. Yeah. This whole these spiritual conversations, but yet there's an experience of learning, right? And the whole the whole thing too of 
so many people that are spiritual people and they're waking up or they're healers, especially like people like that. They, you know, like, uh, holy crap, I'm in a body. Why am I here? Why did this happen? You know, I shouldn't even be here. I should be in the light still. And, you know, like, get me out, get me out, get me out. There's so why I raise my raised vibration all the time. Like it's because I want to go back where, you know, the vibrations, uh, everything's much groovier and better. And, a lot of times people start associating that mean like escape, get me out. I think it's right? not an uncommon yearning. And yet, and yet here we are. Right, right, right. Here <laughs> um, we are still. Because what does the planet need, right? right? People anchoring consciousness, people choosing right. to move more into lighter perspectives, lighter energy towards each other, all of those things. So if all the light people get, get beamed up, that's going to be a problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I, I know a lot of people, there's so many people uh, here from people, certain people in my life, they're like, yeah, everybody's just waiting for the big thing to happen where we all go back into the light. And, and literally, there's people that are just sitting there waiting every day. Are we back in the light yet? Like, that's all they're focused on. Like, they're not, that's, nah, they're not, they're doing things for themselves. I'm sure they're trying to grow and expand, learn the love and everything. But there's a lot of energy towards, I'm just waiting. I'm just waiting. This is all going to be over. We're going to be in a new dimension. And somebody comes by and says, we are in the new dimension already. I've heard that many times already in this life, right? We've already changed. Or I've even heard healers say, you know, we did an event and we did this process and we changed all reality for everybody and all at once. And I'm like, oh, these are just, there's a lot of interesting perspectives. And I think like some people are very curious and they're like, yes, I believe in all of it, kind of. And, there's some, and some people believe in some parts and not other parts. And then there's other people are just like really skeptical because they're like, you guys are all over the place. None of it makes sense to my linear mind. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So how can we simplify yeah. to understand? Like, I think that's why I think you are simplifying by just saying, hey, there's some fairly inescapable truths. Yes, there's all these other perspectives, yeah. but here's the inescapable truth. So how do you simplify it when there's so many different ideas out there? I think one of them is like the things you've already shared, mm -hmm. but what are some other ways when people are so confused about what's true? What's, what's going on? Is it Mercury retrograde? Yeah. Is it this? Is it yeah. That? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think, um, I mean, I can, I'll sh I can share more about the, the soul journey simplified framework in a minute for people that are logical and like to have a framework that can help them make sense of things. But I, I think probably the greatest learning for me, and it's mainly come in actually in the last 12 months, so I'm 45 now and I kind of really woke up in my early 30s, is that what you're waiting for is you. You're waiting for the light, you're waiting for yourself. Like there is only one. So if you believe there's only one and there's oneness and everything is one, then you are the one and you are the one you're waiting for and you are the light and you are the love and there's nothing to wait for because you are it and you are it looking at itself in the mirror you are life witnessing itself witnessing itself and everything you're waiting for is here you are life force embodied and life force is I am life force and I'm witnessing you and you are life force and so I am seeing in you myself you are one and I am one and so is everything else and so then this starts to heal the separation because when we are incarnated, we experience what's called the great separation. It is the disconnection from the thing that everybody's longing for, which is the sense of love, unity, and oneness, which is our true nature. And our, it's like on our journey here, we're just walking each other home to that sense. But while we're still here, not when we get beamed up or when we die, like <laughs> while we're still here to be able to truly embody the spiritual principles, to not be like, oh yeah, everything's fine, everything's fine on my yoga mat, and now this person cut me off in traffic, and I don't agree with that <laughs> viewpoint, and your religion's not the same as mine, and the separation, separation, separation. So what we do is right. we get incarnated and we split. We split from spirit into physical body. Then our mind goes, who am I? What am I meant to be doing? How do I be good and not be bad? How do I be strong and not weak? How do I be this, that, the other? Now our mind is splitting off. Mm -hmm. And we just continuously experience these senses of splits and disconnection and the whole spiritual journey to a degree. I think most people that are on the spiritual journey will agree is that there's an element that's similar for all of us is that we're just seeking to come back to heal that separation and to sense the oneness. 
inside of ourselves so we can heal any split that we have inside in our psyche, our emotional system, our traumas, and in our sense of relationship to other people in life around us where we feel very disconnected and confused and duality and polarity and disagreement. Mm -hmm. So that's a really common theme on the journey for all of us. And I think the big lesson is how do we recognize there is no out there. There is no God's up there. And now I'm going to pray for something outside of myself. Yes, God is everywhere and is out there and is everywhere and is in you and is you. And we could call that universe, love, oneness, whatever the language, high power, whatever the language is for your deity and your cher cherished belief system. But it is in you what you're waiting for is in here. And when we don't recognize that, the second we don't recognize that is the second we disconnect ourselves, is the second we get a sense of I'm helpless, I'm powerless, I need something outside of me. And we're not able to bring the love. We're not able to bring the light because we don't recognize that we are it. It's a huge ask. I get it. It's a huge ask. And to come to that place, there's all this healing of the splits and the divisions and the separations inside of ourselves, as well as the ones that we perceive in relation to other people in the world around us. And um, I'm just going to say, if anyone's like, oh, this all just sounds really good, but yeah, right about doing that in daily life. I totally get it because I'm just like, this world is really like, it's it's a thing. <laughs> it's, it's not easy. It's not yeah. easy. You know, yeah, I've had anxiety lot, since I was four out. years old. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've often told people in my community I had anxiety and, and really intense anxiety from a really young age and I think that was just knowing something what's going on here what's up yeah. <laughs> right 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 yeah okay. so yeah you're probably more of the person that can kind of see like deeper into a situation like in a group and whatnot and see like why this person's arguing with that one and be able to maybe help sometimes intervene you know that you come across as that person to some degree like well you got to understand these things you got to understand those things and help and explain some things to people so you've always been like sort of a guide and teacher to people even before you formally became a guide and a teacher is my sense of you. Yeah, you're, probably, you're probably a little, I wouldn't have thought that at the time, but you're probably a little yeah. bit right. I did some leadership and coaching things before I started doing this work and that was in my corporate career. But I think, I think anyone who has a deep sense of compassion and feeling towards other people and doesn't like seeing suffering and also has curiosity Mm -hmm. and it's like mm -hmm. investigative like why <laughs> like I'm the why 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 person mm -hmm. then I think you naturally lean in towards that and I think now it's a little hard to turn this off for me it's a little exhausting I'm going to be honest like I've even had a conversation with my mother about this earlier who's visiting me from New Zealand it's a little exhausting because it's in my awareness from 5 a.m when I wake up to the moment I go to sleep and all through my dreams and visions when I'm asleep and it's you look at when I look at somebody I look at their face and what I'm seeing is from the moment you were born all the things that happened and where you are now and all the yearnings and longings of your heart and the spirit you really are that wants to be free and that's what I'm seeing when someone is like upset about something or is like excited about something or is crossing my path <laughs> or is a client <laughs> so you know that's, that's who awesome. we are that is who we are and you can't you can't unpackage it and be like I just want to deal with this layer of a person well you can but you're not seeing the total picture and right. yeah right so yeah that's interesting yeah I like that I like that you're that deep and you know mindful of like so many things and then there's people look at future lives and past lives and multi-dimensional lives and this timeline and that timeline yeah and it gets creative and it, again it can seem very non-simplified but the one thing uh, I, I think I it was picking up on as far as how you approach it is, well, it's all bringing you back home. You know, that's the great simplification. That's all bringing you back into connection, oh, yeah. into that oneness within, realizing it's not about all this stuff, but it's all pointing you back in and to the into that connection is how I heard you said. Is that right? It was so perfect, so perfect. And I think the thing is, is that I've gone down those rabbit holes of all those things too. And they're fascinating, like past lives, patient records, the whole the whole gig like like all the exploration 
and I love it all. And yes, past lives, and yes, future lives, and yes, parallel lives, and there is no time, which is mind bending, but there's no time. So it's all happening at once, which is like wacky as, but it's so accurate. And so you can, and so you can, you can lose yourself in the fascination of all of that. You can become obsessed with those things and be fascinated by it or stressed by it, whatever, whatever your, your vibe is about it. And, and that's fine. And I did that. And then I came home and I was like, okay, so I've done a 10 year round, roundabout, you know, journey on that. And so now I am here and I'm seeing all of that. Okay. And so how does this all actually be practically useful given I'm incarnated right now? Because it does not serve me to constantly want to go back to my past lives. How's the only reason I'm going to go there is why does that inform my current life? And how can I use that now to be free? Okay, mm-hmm. like if there's parallel lives happening, yeah, okay, gosh, okay, I'm seeing these weird flashes, I'm seeing all these, I'm, this is a really weird thing that's happening. Okay, but how is that helping me here and now? Because my spirit currently is partially here in this personality for a reason. So if I try mm-hmm. to go over there, then I'm denying I'm trying to be here. <laughs> so I just need to be here now. So there's this fine line of fascination and curiosity and understanding all these beautiful aspects and then how does how do we honor the life that we've chosen? Mm-hmm. We've chosen to come here at a soul level. So how do we take all of that and then use it now to be as whole as possible, as light and as love as possible, as who we know we are now here while we're walking around inside our jobs and our relationships and society and all this stuff. And I think we will naturally be drawn to where we need to be on the spiritual path. So I don't kind of really do deeply any one particular tradition or um, spiritual tool. I kind of bring together a lot of different things. But then there are people that are full-blown astrology, full-blown numerology, full-blown Akasha Records, full-blown about different dimensions. And that is their gift. And my gift is just the bringing it all together and pulling it here (laughs) so how can I be this and so that's where I focus my attention but all those things that you're talking about and that people go down those rabbit holes those are all real and true and they're powerful and then it's just like how do we use that that we can benefit our life here and now instead of not wanting to be here and now that makes sense right right yeah I mean because yeah you can definitely get lost in it right like because our We have unlimited imagination, really, ultimately. We could imagine anything and experience all kinds of things, right? We could experience, like, all of a sudden, like, I'm in a whole new universe. We could, like, literally, I mean, I may not even say metaphorically, like, literally. You could literally. Like, jump into another body or something and not even be here anymore. You're done. I mean, it it could be as expansive and crazy as, as, as you could come up with to your mind. Yes, all those things are true, but then I love your question that you keep coming back to, why? Why does it matter? You know, like, why would it matter, right? Okay, I'm going to jump in a different timeline to do it. I'm manifesting all this stuff, and okay, but why? Well, because it's, because I don't know, because I need, because of my, uh, I always said I'd be somebody. I always said I'd be someone. I I was going to make it. I was going to do my thing or whatever. I don't know, like there's reasons that came up, but it's like, well, what's the deeper reason why, right? What what's that really all about? And mm-hmm. I often am looking at that with my clients, even even now nowadays when I'm doing a lot of intuitive business coaching with people. But but yeah, I mean, to me, that is the most fascinating thing. Well, why 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 does it why does it matter? You know, like. Of course, you could have fun doing whatever you want as an infinite being, right? Hey, let's say, ah, yeah, yeah. but ultimately, it really is like what you're saying, at least, is like it's all about, yeah, whatever you're guided to, I guess, right? So, yeah. how, why are we guided to all these experiences, in your opinion? Like, why do we come in a body and then have all these experiences? Mm-hmm. Is there a purpose to it mm. that you could describe? Um, I have my own take on it, but I'm wondering what your take is. Because yeah. a lot of people what why are we even bothering? What's the point of all this? Yeah, I'm, yeah, totally. And you, do, you do get to that. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, you do get to that, right? You get to that place where sometimes you go, what? Well, and then what's the point? That's the punchline right, right. at the end of it. Right, right. What's the point? Nothing matters. What's the point? <laughs> it's like, right. and, yeah. and and really, your response to that is laughter. 
really. <laughs> like you go through all this turmoil and all this healing and all this discovering who you are and all this amazing stuff. And then you're like, what's the point? Oh, <laughs> it's like, there's no other response to it than to, to kind of giggle at it. But I think, um, first of all, I'm not the truth teller of all time. This is just my perspective. Yeah. Is that for whatever reason, and boy, am I going to have some juicy conversations when I'm on the other side. But my take on it from this perspective is that <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. My perspective on it is that we are here for evolution. And for whatever reason, life wants to experience itself, experiencing itself, divinity, universe, God, creator, is wanting to express itself in the form of our spirit, in the form of us having this experience. Because this 3D reality and earth is not the only place you can incarnate and play the game of having an experience, right? But for whatever reason, it is a very intense classroom, this experience called earth and 3D reality. And it is a perfect reality for intense amount of evolution, for your growth, for your expansion. And the big thing that I focus on when I'm saying, okay, if you're a soul and you're here for learning, healing, growth, and contribution, and you're trying to work out what your life is about, first of all, those things, learning, healing, growth, and contribution will show up crystal clear in multiple ways. First of all, they will show up crystal clear in the events of your life footprints as evidence in your life two it will be in your astrology and your birth chart no doubt it will be in your numerology no doubt and it will be in your hand analysis no doubt you just had Brent on talking about hand analysis so I looked at all of those sources of spiritual wisdom Akashic records and other forms of ways that we can connect with spiritual guidance my own guides and it's in every one of them and if you look at all of them they will all say the same thing about you how is that how is that that you can look at all these random, completely different ancient sources of wisdom, and they will all say the same thing about you uniquely when they don't know anything about you. And they will tell you your learning, healing, growth, and your contribution. But what I love is that you can actually see your learning, healing, growth, and contribution without even having to get any of that because it will play out in the events of your life. If you just sit right now, I call this the footprint method. If you sit right now and you look back at your life and you look at recurring challenges, repeating patterns not just challenges recurring challenges and repeating patterns they will show you what your soul most likely is here for around soul lessons that will prompt your learning prompt your evolution push you to grow make you heal in the process and there's another part of your soul plan and purpose which is the contribution and there's this is really easy your soul is speaking to you all the time and it's telling you what your contribution and your purpose is via three beautiful feelings and they are your passions your inspirations and your intuition and when they converge when you have passion inspirations and intuition consistently converging in one area that is purpose down to a t that's part of contribution but people go but that's gardening for me but that's raising my children for me but that's like writing journaling things for myself but that's like starting this huge business yeah that's right yep that's right for some people it's like animals for some people it's like a business for some people it's like starting some new technology thing for some people it's raising their children whatever it is writing a book I don't know there's a million things it could be playing chess being an architect whatever your vibe is whatever you're passionate about you're inspired about and you have intuitive nudges that will not leave you alone about that is just your soul wants to be free and it just wants to dance. It wants to play. It wants to dance. It wants joy. It wants happiness. That is love expressing itself into this reality through your creativity and your play and your expression. But we are human beings and we get conditioned and we do this. We do, I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy. I shouldn't do that. I should do something else. I should do what my parents told me. I should do what society says. My neighbors think I'm crazy. I shouldn't do this. I should do that. And so we should ourselves out of what is just constantly every day just seeking to be recognized within us because we're carrying around so much weight from the separation <laughs> belief programming or the conditioning we go through the challenges that we had and we don't realize that that's not wrong that's our learning healing and growth that's part of our evolution and here is this other part that wants to express and the two are playing side by side all the time and what I find fascinating is if you dig down with someone, often their learning, healing and growth through their life challenges has set them up perfectly 
to be able to freely express and recognize and own and love their passions, inspirations and their intuition to do the thing they want to do. Like I've no doubt that you do what you do. Something has happened that's formulated you and prompted you and your spirit spoken through you to want to do what you do. And probably your ability to do it now and your wisdom has come through something that you've been through where you're like, oh gosh, I've gone through all this stuff and it's like forged me into the man I am now and here I am and now I've got these passions and this inspiration and I'm following my intuition, I'm doing this thing and it's all, it's like (laughs) into this point of this being expressing itself in the world. Mm -hmm. Right, right. I mean, yeah, that thing about what you should do, like that, that definitely comes up when you have a business too, like there's all these rules and ideas and what's smartest to maximize your revenue and your profits and all this stuff. And that's the way to do business. And so, you know, I, uh, in my business, if I were, I were looking at through traditional business, I'd be like, dude, you're not, you're all over the place. You're not niched enough. You, you know, we need to specialize you even more own that one little blade of grass. You know, that's the way to do it. It's the only way to do it. That's the way to crush it and all that stuff. And, and yet, you know, I, I've sort of have done that before. I've been in a business like that before. Very proprietary, very niched, very down to like, well, you know, a yard of grass, maybe, I mean, not a blade, but it was pretty narrow. I mean, helping healers, like, to learn a specific proprietary system of downloading and tuning into people's energy, building their business from that when nothing like that existed at the time. Like, it's probably more common, you know, it's still, like, probably not that many people doing that sort of thing for healers, Mm -hmm. but, you know, I did that, and, you know, that's where I had a lot of success um, with doing that kind of work, and now I just, I look to get behind people that I believe in that I want to help them to, you know, grow their business and help mm-hmm. them actualize their mission. And that, that, that matters to me. So, mm-hmm. and that, but that's not the only thing, right? So then there's other things that I'm interested in. I got another podcast, just two conscious guys talking and you know, there's all these different things, but yeah, I could go to, uh, I've gone to human design people. I've, I've uh, did a session uh started with one session maybe i'm going to be doing more with brent bruning which you guys could check out previous episode with him should you mention him uh with the hand analysis but i've got other hand analysis from other people and do they say the same exact thing not really you know i would say similar things maybe but their their interpretation still is involved you know so we go into these systems people are still interpreting it's still intuition it's still interpretation it's not just written in the hand or the stars or in your toenails or in your iris or you know yes, well, you're your still hair, a human being right hair, you're, you're still or, having to intuit you're right you're still having to be um be a conduit for that wisdom and then you have to develop the ability to be that conduit right so someone like Brent, who's been doing it for so long and has done so many you're developing this ability to understand it's like anything right you start at the beginning and you're not necessarily that crafted at it so yeah, you're right. It takes, you know, you can you can get different things from different people and not everyone is is excellent at what they're doing, but you know, with time we become we become stronger and better at it. But I love what you shared about um, you know, like navigating even like in a from a business point of view, the rules, you should do this, you should do that. Oh my god, from a spiritual from a spiritual person's point of view, it's a it's like it's a thing. Like I come from corporate business where everything is just like rules and structure and process and like consulting firm like really really clear and then you get into the spiritual space and you're like oh how do I merge that and that together it's a it's a minefield right (laughs) it really messes with your mind I did I definitely lost my way I definitely did because it's it's, because people are looking to create a business I think ultimately that's not only a financial success and yeah, we did it, we're providing this great service in the world and we're dominating or whatever, or whatever, or even it's just very expanded or whatever for a spiritual, you know, kind of perspective. But but it's also like, have you, have you, are you really um deepening? Are you really, you know, going into the depths of who you are in the process? And are you honoring yourself completely? Or have you lost yourself? You know, because that yeah. happens in businesses that do billions and billions of dollars. Those people lose themselves. Even in this industry, spiritual leaders lose themselves all the time in their business. 
happens all the time, like more than people would even imagine. Because I'm one of the guys, you know, amongst others that talk to the people in the back room, so to speak, like, hey, how's it really going? Oh my God, it's it's just crazy. And like these people have been like very prominent people, right? You would think like these are people we're supposed to learn from, right? Yes, but it doesn't mean they don't have massive issues in their life at the same time. As there's people that say you can manifest anything, you can have anything, and I'll teach you how, just like I've done it. And then you again you, you you listen more to their story, you find out they're in tremendous pain at the same time. So mm-hmm. It's like we have to realize, okay, maybe it's not just about all these tricks. Get the trick, get the system. That's what it's all about in business and life. No, it's about it's about what you're talking about, you know, uh, B. It's like it's it's the it's coming back home. We're all walking each other yeah. back home. It's ultimately about that, you know. At the end of yeah. the day, is always going to be about that. Even if someone dies and they never, you know, really consciously knew they were doing that. Well, you're gonna come right back, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're going there. You're going yeah, there with you're going, your life right? Not, right? That's my perspective, right? So we're all funneling to the same point. <laughs> right. I think the thing is that, um, like, you've got to have a, you've got to have, excuse my language, a shitload of humility on this journey. You've got to have so much humility. You are never ever done. You are never done. You're never ever done. There is no I'm an enlightened being. It's not happening. You're a human being and you are subject to your mind and your body and your ego and society and everything you're swimming in when you're here. And I think for me, like I got my butt kicked by spirit last year, but kicked like hard. Like, okay, honey, wake up. Like this is now this is kindy over. This is kindergarten over. I was talking to another lady on a podcast about it the other day. And I'm just like, I was just, it's humbling it's humbling and it's it's recognizing that you're going to level up all the way along and you're never done you're never done and it's really easy to lose yourself in anything you're doing but particularly I think in spirituality and in wanting to help people and then just losing yourself in the process it can happen really easily and I think the most important thing is it doesn't matter what you're doing in your life what career you're in what area of your life you're focusing on. And if you're not all in here and you're not really like anchored in, I am sourced from source, like I that this is who I am and you're really balanced in that place, that doesn't mean that you don't have a busy life and all the things, but if you're not really connected to the depths of who you are and you can't authentically look at yourself and you can't really humbly look at all the parts of your humanity, then you can't show up, mm-hmm. right? You're just yeah. ending up just kind of like out here, your energy's out here rather than really strongly anchored and rooted in what's true for you. And I think that's, I mean, that would have been a good lesson for me to learn a lot earlier. I needed that a lot earlier, but I really learned it in the last 12 to 18 months for sure. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, again, I'll just mention Brent one more time. Brent, when he, you know, Bruni, who did, uh, did do a hand analysis for me, you know, shared so many great things with me. And one of the things he said, I won't get into too much of it, but he says, you have a chameleon ability. You can be whoever you want to be at any moment, right? Um, in, in a sense. So I can walk in a room and be gregarious and extroverted and everything. And people are going to be like, man, you're like one of the most extroverted people I've ever met. And it, like, I was called Mr. Invisible in high school. Like, I... Like, you know, like they would never know, right? Or I could show up more in that energy. And then the minute I start getting extroverted, they're like, wait a minute, where did this guy come from, right? So it's just one example. Like there's so many different ways I can be, right? I can show up in all these different ways. And why do I bring that up is it can get confusing. Like how, you know, like it can get confusing to, again to our mind, right? Like trying to figure out who am I? Who am I? Mm-hmm. You're a lot of things. And, you know, uh, and also that we can, we can, we can be vulnerable to be all of it, you know, and to share all of it and not to make it wrong, you know, not to make it wrong mm-hmm. because, you know, I could just try to be strong as a, as an inspirational speaker, a motivator. Hey, you do this. Oh, oh, oh. We're manifesting everything. Everything's happening quick. Oh, oh, oh. Blah, 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 blah. I could, 
I can play these different roles. I can do that. I could, everybody come on board. Either you're in or you're crazy. Or whatever. Yeah. I can do all these things, right? We could, we could do it, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but my wisdom, my, my path is more like, I could, but I should I, you know, like, is that really the right, right note for me? Is that the right path? And I've done all the different things to a degree, right? A little taste of this, a little taste of that, you know, splash of this, splash of that. But like, you know, you, you got to just navigate your path, your way. What, like you said, I love that. Like the packaging you gave it is with the passions, the inspiration, with the intuition, just those are good pointers, right? Like, what are you being pointed into right now? And that's where you need to be embracing those things now, you know, paying attention. And that's, that's the thing rather than like figuring it out, like let me get it all figured out in my head. And then I'll just do that for 20 years. Like, yeah, that, yeah. forget about it. It's not what you're being, you got to keep listening. You got to keep following the pointers. Everything could change at any moment as well. By the way, you just yes. got to keep, keep focusing on the next steps. So, so yeah, any, <laughs> I don't know. So yeah. So what uh, what's your take on all that as we start to wrap? Well, we'll need to start to wrap up a little wrap bit here soon. Yeah. yeah, I think you're right. And that, that that's I think the most important thing is to understand is that when we're talking about tuning in and listening to your soul speaking to you and following that guidance for the journey you're taking and the paths and the life choices you're making and what you're doing with your time, is that your passions, your inspirations, and your intuition are not you and your personality self. They are not coming out of your mind. They are otherworldly. You don't choose what you're passionate about. You cannot make that up. You don't go and make up creative inspirations, and you don't make your intuition happen. They are otherworldly, and so you can rely on it. You can trust it. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is, is the other beautiful thing about life is, and it's the first two books I wrote was about this, is that while this is going on within you, life the universe is constantly messaging you with very unique guidance, signs and synchronicities, amazing things that are trying to catch your attention if you pay attention. And those things will mirror and line up with what's coming through you. And it's all trying to guide you on this journey. And don't ask me how that miracle can happen because it blows my mind. But it's mm -hmm. happening for everybody, everybody uniquely for what they need helping them to understand those learning, healing, growth, their contribution, bringing this passion, inspiration, intuition into the world. And I think if we stay anchored and we listen to those things within us and we stay attentive to life around us, life will bump us. And sometimes it's uncomfortable, but life will bump us on our path when we're off path. It will beckon us forward with openings and opportunities and miracles and fascinating things happen. If we pay attention and we just like hear, oh, this is real. This is happening. This is what's coming through me. And this is what's happening. And then we're just unfolding it. And it evolves, like you said, it changes over time because you're changing over time. Mm -hmm. So naturally, you're going to be having different points of passion, inspiration, intuition, and life is going to be signaling you in different ways as you move forward. Yeah, totally. Totally. So I know you have a free gift for everybody to help them to maybe tap into some of their own soul answers. You want to tell them about uh, the gift you have for everybody today? Yeah, so that's a guide, a free guide they can download on my website called Soul Answers. This is for any questions you have in your life that you don't have answers to. Any challenges that you're facing that you're feeling stuck with and any unmet longings of your heart and that you don't know what to do about that guide will give you three foundational things to understand about your soul that your soul would want you to know and it will help you to start to see things from the spiritual vantage point so they can go to my website bernadette Logue, com, and it's there on the home page absolutely and uh, we'll also put it into the show notes with the link so you guys can uh, check that out there uh, through, uh, directly to that as well. And, you know, I, I'm sure you'll get more clarity. You'll get more landed, you know, through that. And uh, definitely uh, uh, be, you help guide people, right? As a coach, as a healer and whatnot, and really finding like, what is their, what is, what is their truth? What is the thing that wants to emerge through them in, in any area of their life? It sounds like that's the kind of work you're, you're doing with people. Is that correct? Yeah. So um, my, my recent book is Your Soul Journey Simplified. And that's really about this journey we're on, the aspects of your soul plan, being able to easily see your, <coughs> excuse me, see your purpose, and then seeing your soul journey, the 11 stages of your soul journey. And then the work that I do is I do a group program called Soul Odyssey, 
where we go A to Z for everything, for every aspect of expanding your consciousness, mind, emotions, body, mm -hmm. goals, values, decisions, everything into alignment with your soul in the context of 11 stages of your life. So it's really a soul alignment, bringing you home to who you are. And then I do some private mentoring with people too, doing the same thing, but one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. It's beautiful. You. you guys, this is pretty rich, isn't it? Like I feel the richness of, of, of B and what she's up to. So again, check her out at her website and or through the link in the show notes. And I'm really looking forward to uh, having you take that next step. So um, the next thing we're going to do is a uh, quick tune in for, for B today with my energy scanning and tuning in uh, for her. So you ready to receive me? Yes, I am. Yes, thank okay, you. Okay, cool. Cool. All right. So let me take a moment to tune in for you then and see what comes through. So they're showing like everything, like like the fun aspect, the everything is a party kind of uh, vibe. Um, yeah, there's a lot of heaviness that, you know, comes around a, to your field and to your life. But there's, um, that's probably your, you know, it's funny, uh, you picked a perfect culture and heritage, you know, come into, but like, yeah, there's this sense of let's have a good time in the past. Maybe it was more, you know, I don't know if you smoked or drank a lot or whatever, but like I get, I, I guess get like that's what it used to be associated with, maybe just culturally. But I was showing like, yeah, that's one way to have is fun, so to speak. But like you're like, so maybe what you're showing people too is like, what's what's really more vibrant for you? What's more alive for you? And because people are getting too caught up in their vices. And, um, so like I'm seeing like you're helping them realize that what they say they like and love may not be what they really like and love as much as they think. So, mm -hmm. so you help to you're helping people to move past like these old ways of being that are actually limiting their sense of vibrancy um, is part of this odyssey as well I'm hearing. So yeah, okay. So they wanted to give you some attention on that. Let's see what's next. Okay, so um, I just get uh, uh, like you've got you've got just you 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 tend to be a, an absorber is what I'm seeing in the uh, uh, in the power center. So the this absorption means that you could really understand like uh, so many different people and have such compassion for them. You kind of are referencing that during the show, but people are greedy and like it's all about me baby or whatever like um you might your mind might judge it here and there for sure but ultimately you're like oh okay i hear you that's what you think you need or want you know like <laughs> like i can just feel the compact because you can feel who they are you can sense who they are you can imagine you know if you were them like what that must be like, right? You have a, a unique ability to, to feel into, it kind of reminds me of myself, like again, with the chameleon energy, um, chameleon, like I could just be like, oh, I know what it's like to be B right now, like I think, or whatever, like you have a similar, a very strong, similar uh, capacity, I know this. Okay, well, let's see what else, let's get one more. Yeah, they're showing me with you connecting with that higher dimensional energy. Um, it feels like a crystal kind of energy. And it's like, um, I don't know, crystal healer idea kind of comes through. Something with cr crystals seem to be coming through strong. But it, I'm getting like these uh, great downloads you get. So I don't feel like like a lot of them are for you, but like you get great downloads for ideas for other people, but also... Like it could be entire business plans, you know, things like that. Like you're just, oh, here's how it would work. You know, like you just, they just, things just drop in. You just have the idea, you have the solution, you have the answer. Um, 
So I, what you could do is like you could go to Europe, then you go here, and then you go there, and then this would work, and then that would work, and then this would. You know, so you have like those solutions. So you're good at like tuning into solutions for people um, that are that are fun or expanded and just flow and connect. So, so I'm noticing that about you uh, it's just one of your gifts as well. So yeah, pretty cool, pretty cool stuff. So any reflections on that, B? Uh, yeah, I'm really grateful for that. I love receiving anything like this. This is really, this really generous of you. I really appreciate it. And uh, the first one was so interesting. I like felt the breeze on my skin. You know, when spirit sometimes it's like they're blowing and that's one of the things that I get when spirits here and the really interesting thing in all humility about what you said is that um one of the most important things for me personally right now aside from being here to share with everybody is that I have a real need right now in my life for more fun because I have a very serious vein to me yeah. deeply serious vein to me and of course with the work I do that has expanded that level of seriousness and investigativeness and helping people and that can be quite heavy a lot to navigate when you're doing that all the time and so one of the messages last year was joy like fun like they were like all about it so it was really interesting that that was the first thing that you said I was like oh yeah he's so on point <laughs> awesome yeah so, because I used to be like when I was younger and in my corporate career before I got into this was like the life of the party right right really really like yeah really and and you know and the the whole thing about when you lose yourself in something is like that and finding yourself through what you're doing is mm -hmm. making sure that you're reclaiming all the parts of yourself and sometimes I think you have to lose parts of yourself to then find your authentic self and then bring back all the parts. <laughs> the, yeah. And that's kind of where I'm at right now. So I really appreciate that. That was really, really awesome. 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 Uh, I'm so glad, glad to share. Yes. And if people want to check me out, you can go to yoursacredpurpose.com. Uh, definitely do all this channeling, tuning in, energy scanning, whatever all you want to call it for, for people, especially for those of you that are spiritual entrepreneurs that want to rock at your next level, whatever that might be. Uh, you can take advantage of my Rock Your Sacred Purpose Energy Scan consultation if you want. Uh, you can check that out at my website, yoursacredpurpose.com. I will do wonders for you with what I can see for you and new things will start unfolding for you from that. So check that out there. And also I have a free meditate to make money meditation to help open up your energy and chakras, start getting those downloads of what wants to happen for you. And, you know, um, it works. What can I tell you? When people actually utilize it, they start seeing more money piling in. And uh, so check out the free meditate and make money meditation as well. All right, great. So uh, B, I'll give you the last word for today. Um, you know, what, any last words for the audience? I would just say to anyone who's listening, uh, <clears throat> Like wherever you are on the planet, whatever's going on for you, whether it's you're you're excited and you're doing something amazing, whether you're challenged right now, whether you're feeling stuck, whether you're down on your knees in the dark night of the soul, like I see you. I see you even though I don't see you. I see you. I see you. I see you. You're held. You're loved. You're right on track. You're right on point. You're right on time. Yes. Yes, yes. <laughs> and so it is. Amen. Thank you, B, for being on the show today. It was Thank so you. awesome. Thank <laughs> you. It's such a pleasure. <laughs> okay. And for everybody else who's tuning in, I appreciate you so much. Thanks for listening in today. Keep on tuning in and we'll keep on rocking here at Spiritual Rockstar Podcast. Till next time. The Spiritual Rockstar Podcast. Stay tuned for our next upcoming new episodes each Wednesday and Saturday. Please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review to help us to serve you best. As a reminder, you can get your free Meditate and Make Money meditation at www.yoursacredpurpose.com to rock your sacred purpose. Goodbye for now, everybody.